today on an all-new Dr. Phil. You have hurt me! You have! A volatile couple. You say that he's beaten you up, punched you in the back of the head, spit in your face. Now. You dragged me by my hair. You punched him with a ring on your hand. Her biker husband. You'd been hit in the head with a frying pan? I hit you with a baseball bat. Claims he never abused her. If I did abuse you, you would be hurt. You would be in a hospital. I did go to the hospital. You are trying to have a child in this marriage? Are you insane? Let's do it. Not a good show, everybody. Here we go. This is a safe place to talk about hard things. Stand by. We'll count you down. Today is going to be a changing day in your life. I am not giving up on you. claims that her husband Chance is so controlling that he abandoned her for two weeks with no money, no food, no gas in the car. She claims things got so bad she had to live off of cans of vegetables, barely eating enough to feed her unborn baby, which she eventually miscarried. Now, Lorraine says her husband's vindictive behavior began when he started to hang out with what she calls a motorcycle gang. And now his bad boy ways are ruining their marriage. She claims whenever she has an opinion, Chance gets angry, abusive, and so she recorded one of their fights. Here's just a little snippet so you can get a flavor. Listen. What words have you ever done to accomplish anything? All I was saying is shut the f up and go with me. That's what we were doing right I know, now. but you always run it. How? With your mouth. Lorraine says he spits in her face, has been physically abusive multiple times, leaving her with a bruised head, arms, and ribs. He even calls her vile names like cheap whore. But Chance says it's Lorraine who is always angry. Just last month, she was arrested for scratching his face and leaving him a bloody mess. Take a look at their story. In the beginning of our marriage, Chance was charming. No. Chance is mean and hurtful. Stop running your mouth and just listen. I'm just saying. Go! When I married Lorraine, it was great. But once the honeymoon was over, it was over. Two months into our marriage, she started talking to this motorcycle club. Once Chance expressed interest in the club, he started becoming more controlling. I ride motorcycles with my buddies for a little while. She would get so angry, she ripped my shirt off. So you ripped my shirt off of me and punched me. And I, I left did not again. punch you. This is when the mental and emotional abuse started happening. There has been times he has turned over furniture in our home during arguments. If I was the actually going to hit, hit you, don't you think you'd be beaten up? Jim, do you know how many times you have beat me up? Oh my God, show me some pictures. He started calling me cheap whore. Do not be a whore like her. Chance has spit in my face numerous times in front of people. I finally decided to defend myself. Lorraine likes to throw things and be very physical. Nobody's yelling at you, Lorraine. I'm still seated, if you noticed. You're the one standing being aggressive. Before we were married, Chance uh, had me quit my job. Chance promised me that he would take care of me. If Lorraine tells you that I told her to quit her job. That is a lie. Chance got me a credit card in my name, had it for about a month, and then he took it away from me. Chance always accused me of stealing his wallet. We're married, so your business is my business. Yes, but you always steal. Chance always accuses me of cheating on him. When I try to kiss Chance, he'll push me away. He rejects me. Chance doesn't appreciate anything that I do. When it's good, it is great. When it's bad, it is a nightmare. Well, the arguments between Lorraine and Chance have become so aggressive that the police have gotten involved. Well, they got involved a lot. Take a look. December 3rd of 2016 was the first time Chance was physically abusive. We just got in an argument, and he came walking down the stairs, and he grabbed my phone out of my hand, and he pulled me down on the ground and hit me in the back of the head a few times to where I almost blacked out. 
Any time that I've ever gone to jail, I was only defending myself. I'm not an abuser. You have hurt me! Oh my you God. have! Numerous and numerous times! But you don't see it! You don't, no. because you never do anything wrong! I believe that you believe that. And I finally got away and ran out our garage door. And the neighbors were the ones that called the cops on it. The police asked me if I wanted to press charges, and I told them no. I thought to myself that he made a mistake, and he can fix it, and we should all give somebody a second chance, and that's what I did. Chance spent two days in jail, he got a lawyer, and the case was dismissed. The second time he hit me, he was bugging me, and I started sleeping in the guest room. He came in the room and grabbed me by my hair and dragged me. I never dragged her by her hair. I mean, if I was that gonna... That is such a it would be so obvious. I grabbed a bat. I hit him in the back with the bat, and he busted me in my face. And Chance called the cops. The police arrested both of us. But the judge dismissed it. I was probably hit about five, six times in the past two years. The cops have been called on Chance three times. Chance has called the cops on me twice. OK, Lorraine. Um... <laughs> Is your goal to stay in this marriage? Yes, one marriage and that's it. He's been physically abusive with you multiple times, correct? Correct. And that wasn't a deal breaker? It was, it was, but I try to see past it, try to see the good in him. Well, based on results, it wasn't a deal breaker. Right. Because you're still in the relationship. But I'm not yeah. saying you shouldn't be, I'm just trying to find out how you look at it. You said he's, he's beaten you up, He's punched you in the back of the head. He's spit in your face. He's called you everything but decent. And those aren't deal breakers. They are deal breakers. I'm just, it's hard to get out of the marriage when somebody has taken away your job, your money, everything, any kind of finances. Like, I don't know what I'm supposed okay, to well do. Okay, well, now we're talking about two different things. One, you said you were staying in because of the values and your belief that you get married one time. Now you're saying you can't afford to get out. I mean, are, are these things... I'm trying to stay in because of the values, but if it ever comes to a time where I have to get out, right. I don't know how I'm supposed to get out. I understand. And that's a very valid question, particularly if you're with an abuser. And now he says he's not, and we're going to give him a chance to answer to that in a minute. You say that getting punched in the head's a deal breaker, but based on results, it's not because you stayed. And getting uh, hit, thrown around, demeaned, abandoned, neglected, starved, whatever, those aren't deal breakers. So I'm, I'm just asking you, is there something that is? Recently, I went to jail. You said you blew up and started hitting him. I did. The reason why we got in a fight is because he's trying to join this motorcycle club. Right. And... I'm not a fan of it. So he's been hitting you, so now you've started retaliating and hitting him. I am not proud of that moment. Right. At all. Um, I just had my second miscarriage recently. Mm -hmm. And being locked up in a camper with no kind of finances, no way to have any kind of food, no way to, I don't talk to anybody. He's isolated me away from people. And then whenever he wants to take me out after two weeks, after him being out with all of his friends, doing whatever he wants to do, he starts calling me those names again. And just all that bottled up emotion, I exploded, and it, I'm not proud of that moment. Okay, what do you mean locked up in a camper? Well, our house is getting remodeled, so right. we bought a camper down the street from our house, uh -huh. so we were staying in it. Y you weren't? imprisoned in it, you could leave. You, I could leave, you, but you I just had, had no, nowhere to go. I had no gas in my car. I had no kind of money to pay gas in my car to go do anything. Right. You were having to borrow dog food, I borrow from, dog the, food from, from the, from the neighbors neighbor. to feed the dogs. Mm -hmm. But you did call him. I did call him. And you said, I, I need you. I, I need I'm some kind of food. I'm stuck here. I have no food. I have no money. I have no gas to get anywhere. And what did he say? Uh, well, once was too bad. Um, I'm out doing something, and it's, I, I'll take you later. And then later, and him saying, well, I can't go now. 
you've had two miscarriages. I have. And were you pregnant during this particular time? I was. Because you said in your tape piece, you said uh, you were having to live on canned vegetables and it wasn't enough to feed your unborn baby. And then you ultimately miscarried that child. Yes. And what's his reaction to that? Um, we got lucky. How'd you feel when he said that? Uh, hurt, disappointed. Let's take a break and Lorraine's husband uh, tells a totally different story. He says Lorraine is the volatile one and he's gonna give us his side of the story when he comes out here right after the break. I was driving his truck home because he was too intoxicated. Can't stop! You need to put him drive, bitch. I just leaned over and hit him twice. Numerous times, five, six, seven. My ring got a hold of his face. And later... I don't know what I could do to get you to love me. I came to humiliate ourselves on national television because I love you. You think punching your wife in the head, that's edifying, but trying to get help is humiliating. Chance has given this motorcycle club an absurd amount of money and blames me for his financial problems. He's given one of the members not one but two of our motorcycles. One was worth $28,000. Chance bought another member a $2,500 camper. He even bought a dump truck for one of the members and that was $12,000. When I tell Chance that it's ridiculous, he just looks at me and tells me to shut my f mouth. Chance has been told from numerous people that he is being used as an ATM, and he's not registering that in his head. Lorraine says Chance keeps her from working. Lorraine also claims that her husband is mentally, physically, and emotionally abusive. But he says that is absolutely unequivocally not true that there is a problem here and it's her take a look just a few months ago she was arrested for domestic abuse we were on the way home from dinner and she got angry i was driving his truck home because he was too intoxicated i have a recording of him from that night i was saying shut the f up and go with me to where wherever you want i'm angry He's calling me these names. Can't stop. You need to put him drive, bitch. I just leaned over and hit him twice. It's just like that. And I kept doing it numerous times, five, six, seven. Lorraine had a ring on her right ring finger. My ring got a hold of his face. This was the ring that I used. I got him right in his nose and I think on his forehead. That was pretty bloody. I've gone to jail four times for this woman for defending myself. I've learned not to defend myself, I just take the punches. When she finally stopped, she attempted to run over me in the car. I jumped out of the way. She popped the curb. There's a little I curb around the house. The curb. I wasn't calling the police to get, come get her. I was calling 911 for an ambulance because she's mentally ill. Chance did not call the police because he was concerned about me or how I was feeling. He was just concerned about him and his face. Do you think this relationship is in a spiral down? Absolutely, no, no question. Why? Uh, her and I have a very, a very difficult time communicating, and we both have issues from the past. I have issues, anger issues, and I say things I shouldn't. I yell sometimes. Lorraine likes to yell. We instigate and aggravate each other, and she was raped when she was 13 and 18, and she has issues from the past, and we need help getting through them and getting Chance, them together. I chose to let those issues go in my past and move on with my life and not let it eat me up. It is eating you up. No, it's not. Why are we doing what we're doing? Because every time I try to tell you about my feelings, this is what you do. You cut me off and you think it's stupid. You think my feelings are always dumb. I don't think you're dumb. I came to Dr. Phil for you so we could get help. I didn't come to be on TV. Are you abusing her physically, abusing no. her? No. Because she says you have punched her in the head, split her lip, spit in her face, called her vile names, that 
you are being mentally, emotionally, and physically abusive with her. I am not physically abusive. I do get, use Never. my tongue. I used to you, defend myself. You, chance. Yes, buddy? No. The first time you hit me, we weren't, it was right after we got married. You were not defending yourself. I wasn't in the same room as you. Then how did I hit you? Maybe because you drank too much. And I came in and, and started beating. And I heard beating. you. Yes, you grabbed my phone right, out of my boy. hand. If I got angry and I wanted to, if I wanted to abuse you, or if I did abuse you, you would be hurt. You would I was be in hurt. a hospital. I did go to the hospital. Honey, you go to the hospital claiming I beat you. I held you off of me. I stopped doing that. I stopped defending myself. How many times have you been married? She's my fourth wife. Fourth wife. Okay, one, two, three, fourth one is in trouble. Yes, sir. And what's the common denominator? I mean. You, you were there at the first one and it failed. You were there at the second one and it failed. You were there at the third one and it failed. You're at the fourth one and it's in the ditch. Yes, sir. Is it possible that you are behaving in a toxic fashion in these relationships? Absolutely. It's possible. You're either a real poor picker. I don't think so. You're either a real poor picker one, two, three, four times, or once you get in them and things start to get intimate, things start to get where you're really merging your life with someone else's, you start to panic. And you start to sabotage your relationship because you can't stand the fear of being intimate. I, I got a hold of some police reports, and maybe they unlock some mysteries. We'll be right back. I need to leave him, but I can't leave him. I love him so much. I have to make a fool of myself for you, because I love you. And later... I would never try to run someone over. But, well, you tried to run me over. I, I tried to run you over. Yes. Why would you punch me numerous times while Why you're driving you down the street? Why would you keep on calling me a cheap whore? Chance seems paranoid to me. He likes to take me out to public places, but will start a fight with a complete stranger if they're looking in his direction. There's been times where he's pit his face up to our wall in our bedroom thinking there was somebody in the wall. He actually punched a hole because he thought I was stuck in the wall. Lorraine says her husband, Chance, has accused her of hiding his wallet and keys multiple times. They missed their original flight just a few days ago because Chance lost his wallet again. He blamed Lorraine and it caused another fight. Do you agitate this situation? No, I do not. He gave me his wallet that day and I went to the <clears> gas station <throat> to get him some beer and I handed him back his wallet. Alcohol is like pouring gas on the fire. So you have his wallet to go get him alcohol to come back and pour it on the fire and then you complain when things fall apart. I go all the time for you. You never tell me thank you. You just expect and expect me to do it, you know? Okay, that's the, if you'll just start thanking her, <laughs> everything will be fine here. No. Are you kidding me? I'm not saying everything will be fine. He, you have a drinking problem. At what point do you say enough is enough? I, I need to leave him, but I can't leave him. I love him so much, and it, I know he's hurting inside. I don't know what I can do to help you. I don't know what I can do to get you to love me, to want me. I came to humiliate ourselves on national television Kansas. because I love you. I came to make a fool of myself for you because I love you. Listen, if you think coming here and talking about fighting for your marriage and, and health is humiliation, then you shouldn't be here. You really shouldn't. Because anytime somebody has got the strength and courage to reach for something better and they consider that humiliation, we're so far apart. I, I just, I don't, I don't know what to tell you.
you think punching your wife in the head, whether it's defending yourself or attacking her or whatever, or calling her a bitch and a whore, that's edifying, but trying to get help is humiliating. But those are not humiliating. We could have gone and helped in another way, but I didn't think we would do it, so I don't know. I'm, I've yeah. tried. I've yeah. set us up counseling numerous times, and you've always had me reschedule. You know what my main concern is for you? Yeah, what, sir? I don't want you to go to prison. I don't want to go to prison. And if this keeps up, you're going to prison. And, uh, and there's no reason ever, there's no justification, no reason ever to put your hands on a woman in anger. I don't care what you're doing. Not in self-defense, not in aggression. If she's, if she's, if, if she's attacking you, you jump out a window and run down the street. You do whatever you have to do to get away. Put on your track shoes and run because I don't want you going to jail. Yes, sir. We asked you if, if you had been abusive with her at all, and, and you said no. In your interview form, which you fill out, question number 37, have you ever physically abused anyone? No, I don't abuse people. Quote, phone interview, I have never hit Lorraine, even in self-defense. Then you said, I'm not an abuser, I'm not a physical abuser. Right. Those three things are true. Yes, sir. Chance. I, I'm a big boy. If I beat her up, I'm going to beat her up. And I don't beat her up. So I just randomly hit the back of my neck and ear. How? You beat yourself How? before. Chance. Well, let's look at these four police reports. On 12 3 2016, probable cause victim Lorraine. Charges uh, misdemeanor one, third degree assault, bodily injury to another, simple assault. These were these bruised photos that were, we saw. 22517, domestic disturbance, victim, Lorraine, charges, domestic abuse, simple assault. According to Lorraine, Chance woke her up, dragging her by the hair, convinced she stole his car keys. He hit her and busted her lip open. 672017, probable cause, victim, Lorraine. You guys didn't mention this one to us. And this is, this is the one where you went to the hospital and said you'd been hit in the head with a frying pan? No, she was a baseball bat. That was a self-defense. You dragged me by my you hair. Hit me in the back. You dragged me by my hair from the back of the house to the kitchen. And I told you, if you didn't give me a phone to call my mom or someone, I was going to hit you with that bat to defend myself, and I did. And you grabbed that bat and busted me in my face. Well, there's one in June you didn't tell us about. And this is where you went to the hospital, and you reported that you believe that Lorraine may have put something in the drinks, and that you wanted to have your blood tested. Chance demanded a CAT scan. When the physician questioned why he needed a CAT scan, Chance reported that he had been hit in the head with a frying pan uh, by Lorraine. The physician advised Chance that he had no indications of skull fracture, and so no CAT scan. There was nothing medically wrong with him. Chance then rolled off the bed, so he ended up flat. It appeared to be a staged effort by Chance. He did not injure himself when he went prone on the floor and closed his eyes, not responding to comments. <laughs> they then said they picked you up and put you, not handcuffed, but put you in the car and took you to detention. I don't recall that. But I did hit you in the back, in the lower back, with a baseball bat. Then in September, on September 5th, 17, probable cause, victim Lorraine charges again, uh, assault, bodily injury to another, simple assault, harassment, insults, or taunting. I wasn't the one that called the cops on you. There are multiple reports, but yet you say you've never assaulted her in any way. Show me a picture of her bloody lip. If I, I'm a big boy. If I beat her up, I'm going to beat her up. And I don't beat her up. So I just randomly hit the back of my neck and ear. How? You hit yourself How? before. Chance. Honey, this time when you tried to run me over Why with the car, you threatened to kill yourself. I didn't Chance, call the police. Chance, I would never police. harm myself. Well, you tried to run me over. I, I tried to run you over. Yes. I had to jump away. You jumped the curb. 
I would never try to run someone over. But you did. Why would I try to run someone over? Why would you punch me numerous times driving while Why you're driving Why would you keep on calling street? me a cheap whore every day? Why would you keep on degrading me the way that you do? You can't answer that, can you? Have you, have you spit in her face? I have spit at her, yes. Did you say in front of an eight-year-old child, don't be a whore like her? Whenever she lies, I say a lying whore. Yes, and I said that. Afterwards, I got down on my knee and I asked her to forgive me. Lorraine's mother uh, is going to join us, and she says they better make it or break it, but she says she's tired of being the arbiter. She's tired of babysitting them both. I want to hear what she has to say next. If you knew then what you know now, would you have married her? If I would have known what you've done to me, I would have never married you. Every time Chance and Lorraine have a fight, Lorraine comes to my house for protection. You always say that, because I'm always a liar, right? Chance ends up coming over to the house, too, and they continue to argue. There's been so many fights, I don't know what to do. When Chance argues with Lorraine, he'll walk up to her and say, hit me, hit me. The cops have been called plenty of times. I am concerned for her safety. I cannot tolerate them acting like two young children. I feel if the, it's not going to work, they need to split up. Oh, my God. Linda's in the audience. She's joining us here. You know, I'm, I, I'm asking these two to be honest with me, be candid, and talk about what's really going on with each of them. Is that happening here? Yes, I see it right now. My daughter's not lying to you. Do you think she has any contribution to she, this problem? I've, I've asked you plenty of times to walk away. Listen, you're her mom, and I expect you to be supportive of your daughter, but I also want you to tell me honestly, honestly to God. I think they're both acting like spoiled brat. To grow up. Personally, you two need to get away. You all want children? You can't have children. You're, you're children right now. Both of you are functioning at an adolescent level of emotional intelligence. And there are a number of reasons that that could be true. You've been violated on more than one occasion, and I can tell you that when that happens, you know, you say you've let that go, and I, I, I hope that's true, but I can tell you that when that happens, emotional development is arrested at that point because you go into an emotional fetal position, and then if you start to come out of that and then it happens again, then it just compounds that. And when you go through trauma in your family life, your emotional growth is stunted. And so it's, it's not like you're consciously choosing to do some of the things you're doing, but you do the best you can with what you have at the time. And right now, you guys are functioning like a couple of middle or high school kids emotionally. She was mentioning something earlier and showed us a picture of you with your ear to the wall. What's happening right here? Honestly, I don't remember that time. I'm, I'm listening to music, I don't know. There's a closet on the other side of that wall, Chance. Then there's a picture of holes in the wall where she says you, you punched those holes in the wall. And she said, because you thought there was someone in the wall. No, I didn't think someone was in the wall. She's punched, I've punched the wall before. She's punched the wall before. He told me that he could hear his cousin in the wall. Do you sometimes have concerns like that? And do you sometimes have a difficult time 
separating what might be reality versus what might be fantasy? I don't think of myself as delusional. I don't. No, I didn't ask you if you were delusional. No, I, mean, I don't. No, I don't really have. A, I don't listen to the walls. Honestly, right now, I just worry about our marriage. Mm-hmm. If you knew then what you know now, would you have married her? I love her. If you knew then what you know now. Would you have gone through with this marriage? No, I would not have. If I would have known what you've done to me, I would have never married you. Listen, I I believe that he has just what you admit to doing is drop dead deal breaker spitting in your face, putting his hands on you, self-defense or otherwise, those are drop-dead deal breakers that justify divorce a hundred out of a hundred times if they are not changed. And you're trying to have a child? Don't bring a child into a chaotic mess like this. If, if you two are gonna, if you two want to have a family, then you create a solid, tranquil base to bring a child into. You two are wounded individuals. And when you come to a relationship, you bring all of your history with you and you either contaminate the relationship or you contribute to it. And you are a contaminator and you are a contaminator. So my advice to you is to do one of two things. One is you two need to go home on separate flights to separate homes and do not be together again or In the alternative, I want to make available to you a chance to go to a place together that deals with trauma and allow you as a couple to learn how to be married. And that place is a place called on-site. And OnSite is a place in Tennessee that is the worldwide leader in intensive workshops and treatment specializing in people that have been through emotional trauma, who have emotionally stunted growth. And it's, I mean, you can see a picture, it's beautiful. It's on 100 rolling acres outside of Nashville. It is absolutely beautiful. The facilities there are beautiful, and they bring in the top, people in the world and put together custom programs to help heal individuals and couples to hit the reset button to give you guys a chance to start a marriage based on strength and love and calmness instead of chaos and pain. When you leave there, then have a marital therapist that would help you implement a family plan where you have, you talk about mundane things like a division of labor and how you deal with in-laws and family planning for having children and economics and freedoms and boundaries and all the things that really make up a marriage. Are you willing to do that? Are you willing to do that? Uh, we will fly you there. We'll, ca- we'll take care of everything for you. It is just our gift to you, and we'll arrange for a marital therapist to stay with you afterwards as long as you feel like you need to do that. You deserve this. Thank you. Will you take that help? Absolutely. Okay. Okay? All right. Next, are you looking to buy a cute little designer dog? Well, don't. My next guest tells us where these innocent puppies come from. You will not believe it. We're going to meet her after the break. Well, joining me now is somebody that's really special in my life. She is a good friend of mine, Madeline Bernstein. And Madeline is the president of the Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals, Los Angeles. Now, Madeline... um, Madeline is also the author of a brand new book, Designer Dogs, an expose 
inside the criminal underworld of crossbreeding. Now, I jumped, jumped at the chance to write the foreword to this book because I want people to understand all options when considering adopting a dog. Now, Madeline has some very important information about where designer dogs come from and why adopting is so important. And I said she's very special in my life because Madeline was involved when I adopted uh, my dog, Maggie. And I, Robin and I adopted Maggie when she was like eight weeks old. And she was, um, uh, we had her for 13 years until just this spring. And uh, we lost, uh, we lost Maggie. Uh, she, she had kidney failure. And so, and I, I wrote you at the time. And by the way, he was providing dialysis and everything for Maggie. But this is the guy you're talking to here. He wrote me to thank me for allowing him to have the adoption in the first place. It's a real deal. Well, I wanted you to know, because I mean, it was, this was my white shadow. I mean, she was just a best friend for 13 years. She was so, <laughs> so special to us. Well, Madeline, let's talk about this book, because I, I said I jumped at the chance. Designer dogs, uh, these, was there really a surge with social media when these dogs, I mean, people, this became really in vogue, right? Yes, and now people don't talk about dogs as cute or adorable, they talk about them as Instagram worthy. There are Boxy Bull and how, how do you pronounce some of these? Chewarrier. Chewarrier. Well, so if, if you read the book, you'll see the story of the Labradoodle, and that's what really started it. Right. And if you read this, he regrets having done it. So right. with someone who has a shelter full of, of dogs, when this whole designer dog thing started, which is basically people are saying, I have a purebred Labradoodle. People, what's a mix between a Labrador and a Poodle? A mutt, right? So you're yeah. talking to someone here who basically had shelters full of designer dogs, right? Right. Cool. Well, tell us about Winter. Well, Winter is actually uh, one of my dogs. There's the white Pomeranian. Winter has got all the puppy mill problems. She was in our shelter in desperate shape. She weighed a pound and a half, had open wounds, was completely matted, covered with fleas, was very sick, and I was at the shelter doing something else, and we saw Winter, and I said, I'll just take her home and get her in shape, you know, make her well, and then we'll be able to put her up for adoption. And of course, now people yell at me and go, in your position, why do you have a dog like that? You know, that's a designer dog. And I'm like, if you saw what Winter looked like, I mean, she was vicious, she was mean, she was sick. Of course, once the pain stopped, right. um, and she felt better, and she gained some weight, and of course, at that point, nobody would let me put her up for adoption. Um, so, but she has all the puppy mill dog problems. Yeah, but I have this theory that, and I'm, I truly believe this, that when you rescue a dog, that dog knows they've been rescued. I, I mean, I, I believe Maggie knew that she had been rescued. And, and it's like they forever are devoted like you saved me and I'm going to devote my life to you. Before I go, I want to share one last picture. It's my favorite picture of Maggie with my assistant, Barbara. That's Maggie. And if dogs can smile, is that dog smiling or what? Um, and that's what you get when you get a rescue dog. That's not some designer dog, that's a rescue dog. Right. If we stop the demand, we can stop the supply. And that is really, you know, the message here. Go to the shelters, adopt a dog that's already in existence, and let's ignore the, the puppy millers to death, basically. Yeah. Well, listen, the book, the book is Designer Dog, Designer Dogs, an expose inside the criminal underworld of crossbreeding. Uh, I wrote the foreword, and this is not a depressing book. It is a very informative, heartwarming book. I want you to get this book. I want you to read this book, and then I want you to become a soldier in the Army. 
And this woman is leading the charge. She is leading the fight. So, please, designer dogs and expose. I want to thank all of my guests today. A special thanks to Madeline Bernstein. Her book will be available today on Amazon.com or everywhere books are sold. And everyone here in the audience is going home with a copy. Okay? And all proceeds of this book will be donated to SPCA LA. And um, I want to make another donation to you guys of $10,000. Fair enough? Thank you so much. All right. Thank you so much. We'll see you next time. That was, thanks a lot. We'll thank you.